Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to first uh, thank my friend and colleague from Florida, Mr. Deutsch, for raising a very important issue that I think everyone has a responsibility to speak to directly. The president yesterday refused to say that he would accept the results of the election if he lost. President Trump's comments yesterday, his inability to acknowledge that there will be a peaceful transition of power. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I and, understand that, but and, people are rioting. Do you commit uh, to making sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Uh, the ballots are out of control. You know it. And you know who knows it better than anybody else? The Democrats know it better than anybody else. Go ahead. Except the peaceful transfer of power. And worse than that, he said, the problem is ballots. Oh, too many ballots. Of course, ballots and the right to vote are the cornerstone of our democracy and the most powerful expression of that democracy. And it was. That's why Keith Skipper with the local Trump campaign worries about potential voter fraud when he sees pictures being posted on his website of ballots sent to inactive voters stacking up at apartment complexes where they once lived. We're finding them in people's mailboxes. We're finding that people that people that are deceased are being mailed ballots to their former residents. And that's why it's critical to sign your ballot. It's a sad day to hear the president say that he would not accept a peaceful transition of power. The problem is people are going to vote and to hear so much silence on the other side of the aisle. Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances because I think this is going to drag out and eventually I do believe he will win if we don't give an inch. Hey, Kelly, I wonder if you can just clean up or clarify something the president said yesterday. Um, if he loses this election, can you assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power? You are referring to the question asked by the Playboy reporter, right? I, I'm referring to you with the president being asked if, if there would be a peaceful transfer of power, and he did not uh, say yes. Yeah, so I believe I'm asking you, will there be a peaceful transfer of power if he loses this I election? I believe that question asked by the Playboy power, in fact, I think I have it right here uh he was I'm asked question, he was right? asked when lose or draw whether he would accept the transfer of power i'm not entirely sure if he won why he would accept a transfer of power that is um maybe the deranged wish of that reporter but that's not how but, but, but uh governing very works. direct and very simple question if the president loses this election will this white house will this president assure us that there will be a peaceful transfer of power it's a very simple question the, the we, president the president will accept the results of a free and fair election. Uh, but I think that your question is more fitting to be asked of Democrats who have already been on the record saying they won't accept the results of an election. Um, in fact, I have several of them here for you. South Carolina Democrat uh, Jim Clyburn has said uh, that Trump is not going to win fairly. Senator Barbara Boxer has said that the only way Trump will win is to steal it. That's according to Democrat Senator Barbara Boxer. Uh, the Washington Post has noted um, they have a headline, Democrats may not trust the results of the election if Trump wins. And then you have uh, that beautiful quote from Hillary Quint Clinton that Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstance. So I think your fitting is more question, more uh, fitting, a fitting question for Democrats. Yeah. Um, I also want to say that uh, before I get to my first question, I think the truth matters. I think the truth matters. Yes. Kelly, uh, Kelly, just to understand this clearly. Are the results legitimate only if the president wins? The president will accept the results of a free and fair election. He will accept the will of the American people. So for clarity, if he loses and it's free and fair, he will accept it. I've answered your question. He will accept the results of a free and fair election. When you say our, you mean, you mean the White House, including yes, the president? Yes, I speak on behalf of the president. Okay, yes. His thoughts go out. I am the president's spokesperson. I speak on his behalf, well, Peter. Fact, well, these ballots are going out. If the president does win, will he still think it was rigged and fraudulent? I've already answered this question, yes. Um, I also want to say that uh, before I get to my first question, I think the truth matters. Mr. I think the truth matters. Mr. Whitlock said, oh, Black Lives Matter has on its website, it's a Marxist organization. So let me be clear. Black Lives Matter, and I'm reading from the website, was founded in 2013 in response to the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's murderer. It is an organization whose mission is to eradicate white supremacy and build local power to intervene in violence inflicted on black communities. So it's a very clear. That's, that, that's not Marxist ideology. That, I hope, is American ideology. I think the truth matters. 
I know many athletes, they have Christian values. They were raised in Christian homes. And I don't think they truly understand Marxism. I don't think they know that the women who founded Black Lives Matter are trained Marxists. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are super versed um, on sort of ideological theories. I don't think they realize that if you went to Black Lives Matter's own webpage, the what we believe section of their webpage was just an expression of Marxist theory. I think the truth matters. Black Lives Matter's own webpage, the what we believe section of their webpage was just an expression of Marxist theory. Oh, Black Lives Matters has on its website, it's a Marxist organization. So let me be clear. Black Lives Matter, and I'm reading from the website, was founded in 2013 in response to the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's murderer. Black Lives Matter's own webpage, the, the what we believe section of their webpage was just an expression of Marxist theory. And so, and they've scrubbed some of that what we believe because there's been a lot of pushback. The threat it poses to people that believe in a nuclear family. And so I'm just trying to point these things out to athletes, trying to educate them on, you know, what Black Lives Matter's real agenda is. And, and I legitimately think that Black Lives Matter is one of the most racist organizations we've ever seen in the history of America. Bigots love Marxism. And Marxism is, it, it's a great marketing scheme, Black Lives Matter. It, it's a great slogan. But if you look at the truth of what it truly represents and, and the agenda it's working towards, it will lead to the destruction, not just of America, but in particular, Black America. Again, get in one more question, but thank you, Dr. Smith. Um, uh, Mr. Day Kim, thank you uh, for changing your mind and agreeing to testify. You're, testimony was compelling and important, and I, too, was deeply saddened by the fact that that vote against that resolution was not unanimous, and it just evidences that we have a lot of work to do. So I thought, why would Congress need to hear from me on this subject? And then I remembered House Resolution 908, passed just this past Friday. I'm sure you guys recall it. It was a bill that simply asked to condemn and denounce anti-Asian sentiment, racism, discrimination, and religious intolerance related to COVID-19. To me, that was a no-brainer. Who wouldn't support condemning racism in 2020, a full 50 years after the civil rights movement? But as I looked at the roll call, I saw that 164 representatives in the House voted against it. That's more than a third of the members of Congress and more than 80% of the Republican members of the House, including some of you watching right now, that could not simply say that anti-Asian sentiment is wrong and should be condemned. The reason that people voted against the resolution that you were talking about was because inserted in that was a political attack specifically designed against the President of the United States. And, and I too was deeply saddened by the fact that that vote against that resolution was not unanimous and it just evidences that we have a lot of work to do. I think the truth matters. Bullshit. I am.